Welcome to the science of aging. Why do we age? Biologically, getting old makes no sense. Why should we start to physically deteriorate? Why haven't our bodies come up with better defenses? Getting old doesn't just affect our physical appearance. It affects every body system, from our brains, in terms of memory, our cardiovascular system, heart disease, arteriosclerosis, to our bones, muscles, immune systems, our risk of developing cancer, and our ability to have healthy children. Why should we suffer this fate? What do we actually know about aging and how aging works? Over years of study, we've come up with many ideas. Some have been outrageous and some have been plausible. As we continue to learn, our knowledge and understanding improves. What we know today will be entirely different five years from now, so take this with a grain of salt. To date, we have two main theories of why we age, the accumulated damage hypothesis and the trade-off hypothesis. Almost everyone gets injured, from paper cuts and bumps and bruises to broken bones and other major trauma. We all know that a paper cut is not a life-threatening injury, but it's still damage. Cuts that are not much larger can still leave scars. Broken bones, even if reset properly and allowed to heal and rehabilitate, are never quite the same again. Those injuries you sustain when you're young tend to bother you again later in life. Arthritis is more common in previously injured and damaged body areas. In the beginning, when you're a child, your body can heal almost perfectly. This is one of the reasons that so many major reconstructive surgeries are done as soon as possible after birth. When the bones haven't yet solidified, when we're growing, we have the best ability to heal. This capacity holds up pretty well until puberty. I'll come back to that point. Your cells live much shorter periods of time. Most don't survive more than seven years, and many only live for a few hours to days. During that time, they work hard, and they too get in Cells can be damaged by lots of things. Physical trauma, things like bumps and bruises and cuts and breaks. Chemicals, heavy metals, peroxide. Radiation, ultraviolet, x-rays, other types of radiation. Illnesses, infections and injuries and allergies and inflammation. And mutation, even normal parts of day-to-day -day life from your own personal metabolism cause damage internally to your cells. Your cells can replace themselves, yay, but only a certain number of times, oh darn. This is called the Hayflick limit. The reason? Those future replacement cells get damaged too. Eventually your body considers them unsafe for use, like rotten eggs or spoiled milk. One of the reasons that stem cells are important is because they, have, they don't have that replacement limit, but they're not necessarily pristine either. Because there are so few, they seem to escape most of the damage. So they're newer, younger, and healthier cells. Our second hypothesis was the trade-off hypothesis. If you have kids, you love them. They're a fundamental part of life. However, realistically, they come at a cost. Pregnancy requires a tremendous physical investment, and again, your body is never quite the same afterwards. Once they're born, children continue to consume your energy. You lose sleep, repair time, energy running them around, mental health worrying, and they bring home countless germs from school to share with you. Many parents forego seeing to their own health needs, things like doctor's visits, in order to care for their children. Cumulatively, these things tend to shorten lifespan. There have been numerous studies in many species that show that as the number of offspring increases, lifespan decreases. Furthermore, when you have children also impacts your health. The earlier you have them, the easier it is physically on your body and the longer you live. You can, of course, choose not to have children. However, physically, this is what happens. You have a certain amount of energy available. From conception to puberty, that energy is used primarily for the growth and repair of you, your cells, your body. From puberty to young adulthood and through adulthood, 
that energy use changes and it shifts toward developing and attracting a mate and becoming pregnant and having and raising children. Some of those things are completely unavoidable. Those secondary sex characteristics that your high school biology teacher warned you about, those are things you cannot stop, even if you choose not to have children. Throughout your adult lives, you work, you raise children, you chase them around, and eventually you run low on energy. In your elder years, a common question is, what energy? Although you still have some, and biologically you still have plenty, that energy is devoted toward repair and maintenance at that point in your life. You literally trade your life for that of your children, and if you're a parent, you wouldn't have it any other way. So to summarize, your cells have a limited amount of energy, and they accumulate damage throughout your lifetime. Your body is pretty good at repairing a lot of that damage, but those repairs aren't perfect. And your body is also multitasking. You cannot prevent all of the damage that comes with life, but you can limit it. And some ways to limit some of that damage include limiting high impact activities, choosing organic foods and biodegradable cleansers, sunscreen use. Ultraviolet radiation is the primary source of radiation injury for most people. Simply washing your hands with normal soap and water can prevent the majority of illnesses and diseases. And in terms of mental health, it's crucial to keep learning. It keeps your brain busy and healthy. Thanks for taking the time to get a brief overview of what causes ADHD.